time for Talking Pines, and I'm delighted to be joined by dance legend Wayne Sleep. Wayne, welcome to Talking Pines. Cheers, I can just about reach it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's bigger than me. <laughs> Cheers. For those that don't know, Wayne is five foot two. But and you... shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> but being five foot two hasn't stopped you doing anything, has it? No, I mean, it was a terrible thing, cos um, I was brought up in Hartlepool in County Durham, and um, I'm from Plymouth, but we moved here when I was five years old. And I went to um, a dance school, and I wanted to be Fred Astaire or Gene Kelly or something like that. And funny enough, I've just booked an hotel in Middlesbrough here, and when we were coming through Middlesbrough, I think I saw the old Methodist Hall, where I, I did the song and dance competition when I was eight, um, a bit of tap dance, saying five foot two eyes are blue. How fortuitous! <laughs> but the, the adjudicator rang a bell. It's all Middlesbrough's fault. And she rang a bell, and they said, "Where's this boy's mother? He must learn ballet." We'd never heard of ballet. We'd never been to ballet. My mother said, "Ballet never." But I started learning ballet. I I was um, in the West Hartlepool Tech, in as hooker in the scrum. And I was transferred to you'd Queen... Never, you'd never been prop, would you? <laughs> no. I knew what to do in the middle, that's what I'm telling you. It wasn't nice. But anyway... <laughs> but we usually got the ball out my side, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but um, I went to the West Hartlepool Tech and I ended up in Queen Victoria's Hunting Lodge in <laughs> Richmond Park at the age of 12, where I only learnt ballet, and then I didn't grow. Whereas I could have been a nice song and dance man, but it all came round in the end. And, and really, it is to do with getting the negative and turning it to be positive mm. in life. Mm. And that's why I tell all the kids when I do workshops all around the country. I try and aim, you know, because so many people want to put you down all the time, don't you find? I mean, there are bullies all over the place, and there are bullies in government, bullying each other. That's all I ever see. Well, don't you think, in on. a way, there's more, because of online, yes. there's now probably more bullying going yes. on than there's ever been before, actually. Yes. I mean, there's horrible stuff that gets yeah. said. Well, I, do, I don't do that bit. I only don't just you? do the bit when I'm performing and stuff like that because I've heard a lot of uh, people who are well known like me do get hate mail a oh, lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so you you're must sort of, get some. You're still oh I've had loads. I bet I've had more than all anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to be people either really like me very much indeed yes. or not at yes, all. Well that's it. But I can live with that, you so know. I mean it yes. didn't bother me. Yeah. Um, so you you were kind of a Billy Elliot figure then almost, weren't you? Yes. Well I mean the coal mines were still going when I was in the fifties yeah. here. So we didn't really have this kind of condition that seems to have hit red car since the steel steel places are all closed. I mean, it's just desperately bad. Um, and it wasn't until afterwards they did the Billy Elliot story, but um, Lee Hall, who um, wrote the play um, and the film, um, said to me one day, he said, I did base it on your autobiography. Yeah, I'm sure. Because it was a boy getting out of a lower working class situation and being transported almost and given a chance in life. And, and ballet... I mean, how many years were you there at the Royal Ballet? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I was 18 years with the Royal Ballet as a senior principal, which is only six of us. And um, I wasn't going to get in the company. And you have to be five foot seven is the smallest height for a man. And uh, the, the founder of the company, I was going to take hormones to make me grow. I was desperate. Eight years training and I wasn't going to go anywhere. And so I decided to take hormones and all that, but they hadn't advanced them enough, and they were very tricky sort of pills to take. Yeah. And so she said, you're just going to have to spin twice as fast as everybody else and jump twice as high. So, well, that's what that's had what to happen. That's what you did, no. Yeah. I mean, you become an absolute dance legend, and dancing itself is just so popular today, isn't it? There oh, it's is wonderful now. Television shows. and yeah. I mean, it really is the power of dance. When I was at the Royal Ballet School... There were five boys to 20 girls in each class. The boys got away with murder, I'll tell you. <laughs> because they needed us so much, we could get away with... Well, I won't go there. But anyway, so... But, I mean, we did, you know, drop subjects, GC ones and all that. But um, the main thing was to be brilliant at dance. And the discipline of doing dance as well is incredible. Now, it was five boys to 20 girls, 
Now it's 50% boys at the Royal Ballet yeah. School and 50% girls. I mean, that is a huge turnaround. And the training for the boys now, I mean, they are rocketing sky high. I mean, I'm glad they couldn't do what I could do in those days, everybody, but a lot of them could do what I did then yeah. now. But a lot physically, more. Physically, yes. Yes. Pre pretty demanding time. Oh, no. It's an hour and a half class, an hour and a half ballet class every morning. No matter what you've done the night before, you might have had a premiere in New York. We used to do three months tours of America, eight shows a week, Hollywood Bowl, San Francisco Opera House, then back to St. Louis, 120 degrees. But you always have to be in class the next morning. Else in a couple of weeks, the seams will show. And you can't do without it. And you're always learning. Never think you know it all. Because and and you've you gone, know. but you've gone, you know, you've done that high art form. Yes. But you've also been in the Big Brother household and done, oh, all, yes. so, done all sorts of television. Money I mean... makes the world. <laughs> <laughs> but you have done an enormous amount of TV, yes. and acting, and do you enjoy diversifying? Well, the thing is, if I'd stayed with the Royal Ballet, I would have ended up probably doing a Tarantella for the rest of my life, following myself around a little pond. And I knew that I had to get well known. And to get well known, television is the only way to do it. Yeah. And so I started appearing on Morecambe and Wise and things like that. And I was in Lina Zavaroni's dance shows. And I did everything, basically, Bruce Forsyth. And that made my name popular so that when I wanted to do my own shows, with high art, jazz, tap, ballet and contemporary, which was the first time in one show you could see all those things at a very high level, I knew that I had to have a name and I knew that if I stayed with the Royal Ballet, I'd probably be a little teacher somewhere now doing something. But I mean, I would have enjoyed it. Yeah. But I still had... I hadn't reached the height of my talent. And so I had to carve away for myself. And the only way to do it is, like you said, be in things like the Big Brother house. Yeah, well, no, it's worked for you. It's worked incredibly yeah, well. Yeah. But it's worked so well, Wayne, that it's put you in a, in a, a comfortable position. Yes. Um, yes. And a position where you can give something back. Which yes. I think, I think, the, I think the, the Wayne Sleep Foundation is... Um, my foundation started on the anniversary of Princess Diana's death. Who, who you old. famously got to know? Yes. Well, I got this phone call one morning and I said, who's this? And she said, it's Diana. I said, Diana who? I don't know any Dianas. She says, Wales, <laughs> the Princess of Wales. And she said, I want you to come to the studio. So I went to this little studio. I didn't know what it was about. And she was there. Oh, she was so beautiful, you know. And she blushed when she looked at me under her eyes and yeah. it flickered like this. You know the look. Yeah. And um, she had her headband on, her pink leotard, her tights, her leg warmers and her jazz shoes. And she says, I want you to dance with me at Christmas at Covent Garden. And I looked up at this towering inferno and I went, I don't think so, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said to her, oh, do you mind if I sit down? I've had a rather late night. And she went, you naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> and when I realised she had a sense of humour, I realised that Ah, we could do a one-upmanship, and we did a three-and-a-half-minute. She had the music, she wanted to know what I was going to wear. We did it to Billy Joe's Uptown Girl. Yep. And e even now, people talk about it who've never seen it, and there was no film of it, but there's lots of photographs. But I think, in a way, it was a sign of her departure from the mainstream yeah. and, and going on her own way just to be, you know, independent in a and way. And, of course, The Crown, famously... Oh yes, they did, oh, yes, they did it, didn't they? They did it, absolutely. Yes. He was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> he should have asked you. No, he was... But no, 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 he was very... But she, of course, did amazing chari was... charitable work, didn't she? And fantastic yes. things. Well, that's that where did. we used to meet a lot. Of stuff. And you're now doing that through Bernardo's and all that stuff. Now, with the foundation, yeah. um, I knew that she loved kids. And uh, so, on the anniversary, I named it Memoriam of her. And it was a dance scholarship at first, but now it's a foundation that gives top-up grants, um, to top up their grants for um, accommodation. So, over a three-year period, I will provide the accommodation. <coughs> but, you see, if you're in Leeds and you get a scholarship in London, where do you live? Yeah. And if the parents um, fall foul, like, you know, your dad goes out of work because of steel works closed, something like that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. happened at all, yeah. I get 
called by the um, vocational colleges and then I help them out. And it's a good, and it's, it just fills a gap which nobody really thinks about. And also now, because so much of the money and the grants come from education, they want to see a certificate. So you have to do a degree to be a dancer now, which I think is crazy, actually. Yeah, so do I. You know, and, and they've got to work at night, they've got to do a thesis and all that. I mean, you know, I don't qualify to be a teacher because I haven't got a teaching diploma. I don't have a degree in teaching. Well, yeah, I know, that sounds crazy. It's but... crazy, but I, I do. I call yeah. it um, a, a day of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, over half a century of you know, being at the top of your game, doing the remarkable things that you've done, varied career with TV, as I said, acting, dancing, ballet, yes. all sorts of things. What's the best bit being of it all? Oh, you are horrible. I don't know. Um, the best bit sitting with you? No. No! <laughs> I think the best bit is being able to turn round, being five foot two, which you'd never get into a ballet company at that height now, probably, and being not taking no for an answer. And when I said to Margot Fontaine, who was one of the greatest ballerinas of the world, I said, what is it that was the secret? Were well, the choreographers? Was it the teaching? Was it Rudolf Nureyev? So no, none of that. The word is, Wayne, tenacity. Yeah. Staying power. And that's what I learned at a very early age. And I think that's what I'll congratulate myself about, having looked back on my career. Well, you know what? All of us in this room here and watching on television and listening on DAB <laughs> Radio will say the same. Wayne Sleep, what a pleasure to have you on Talking <laughs>